Hello everybody and welcome back to the Bourbon Bar. I'm Holden and today we're going to be reviewing a very, very special whiskey to me and in no particular way other than the fact that it's rare and I got my hands on it and I really, really wanted it. I searched high and low every single day of the week. But before we get into it, I would just like to invite you guys to please hit the like button on this video and subscribe to the channel if you guys aren't because I am trying to get to a thousand subscribers by the end of the year and uh, as you can see, my bar is barren. I just switched sets and I'm, you know, working on putting up shelving, but you know, that kind of stuff's expensive. So, uh, help me with this video and then I get some income and then I can put stuff up on the walls, stuff like that. So that would help a lot. But basically today we're going to be reviewing Little Book Chapter 6 to the Finish. Now this is 2022's limited release, Little Book. Um, it does come from the Beam Distillery. And what can I say about it other than the fact that it's interesting? Um, a lot of people might be turned off by this because it is $130 at retail, which is uh, MSRP, and it's a little bit young. Honestly, it's a little bit young to have that kind of price tag. And while that would turn most people off, I have never had a little book before, and I like bookers, so I figured I'll trust them. I'll uh, trust them and see what they're up to. So as you guys can see, just a gorgeous bottle. And I'm going to go ahead and read the neck tag for you guys because that's how we're going to kind of determine what's all in this whiskey. So it is a blend of five different whiskeys. One of them is a four-year straight malt whiskey finished with cherrywood staves. Another one is a four-year straight malt whiskey finished in applewood smoked barrels. Another one is a four-year-old straight malt whiskey finished in hickory smoked barrels. And then another four-year straight malt whiskey finished with maple wood staves. And then a five-year Kentucky straight bourbon coming in at 117.4 proof. That's 58.7% alcohol. And honestly, like, I just love this bottle and the design of this bottle. But for all of you guys who are bourbon drinkers, um, this has a lot of malt whiskey in it. I'm not sure about ratios. It doesn't tell me the percentages, but what it does tell me, a little bit younger whiskey and it's got a little bit of a hefty price tag, but that probably means that they're gonna have to work extra hard in their blending to make this something worth that $130. That being said, I'm gonna pour it in the Glen and let you guys know how it is. So this whiskey is actually one that I've searched for for a long time. Uh, the last two weeks, I actually went to the d liquor store every single day after work because I wanted to get this whiskey. And then, uh, of course, I got it from the wine cellar in De Pere, which if you guys are ever in the De Pere area, go check them out. But they hooked it up. Uh, he saw me walk in. He knew what I was looking for. Went in the back room, grabbed it for me, sold me it at retail, which is fantastic. So, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get it right on the nose for you guys. Let you guys know how this whiskey is. Okay, right away I get this uh, light honey note. It almost resembles a lot of like a Highland Scotch, something like a Glenmorangie Ten Year or uh, maybe a Monkey Shoulder, something with that sweet maltiness in it. But not like it's not super scotchy, but it does have those like scotchy flavors. Uh, there is a light smoke in it, probably from the smoked barrels and smoked staves that were finished in, that was finishing these malt whiskeys. But overall, it's not like, it's not peat, it's not punching you in the face, it's just a nice, light, subtle smoke, which is actually really, really nice. I'm getting a kind of like, honey cereal, like honey nut Cheerios, that's a pretty good note. Um, cereal -y vibes, there's definitely some grain in this one. Lemon zest, it's got some light fruit. And actually a lot of like a green apple-y note as well. Green apple kind of jumps out of the glass and that's what I'm talking about when I say that light fruit. It's a nice green apple, but overall it seems really well balanced. And honestly, I could just go into more and more depth on this nose. This is just a very intriguing whiskey. And uh, I think so far in the nose, it's smelling like it's worth that $130 price tag. But it definitely has a sweeter presence, maybe a little bit of sweet oak there in the back end as well. But it's great on the nose. Now I'm going to check out the palette and see if this is really worth that $130 price tag that it has. Okay. Right away, I'm getting a kind of like dark molassesy sweetness it has some caramel on it but it definitely has that malt that is coming through on the nose 
being malt whiskey, totally understandable. But also, it has this like rich chocolatey like aspect in it as well. The grain is also there, but not in like an off-putting young way, more of like uh, a helping the whiskey kind of way. It's making it more interesting for me, which is something I really like to see. Okay. Ooh, yes. This is, it's, there's something I've wanted in this bottle is just intricate notes, something, something that's just there for me. And one thing in particular, it may be a little offsetting to some of you, but to others, you may find this very enjoyable. And that's like a honeyed smoked ham. And I'm talking like full fledged um, Thanksgiving or Easter type ham has that like honeyed ham smoked on the grill. Very, very just nice and sweet, but at the same time savory. It almost doesn't know. It kind of has like a brininess to it, um, but not in a bad way. It, it mixes well with that sweetness and kind of has just like really well put together flavors. One more try on the palette here and then I'm gonna give this guy a grade and let you guys know if you should buy it. That green apple note that I got on the nose comes through on the palette. Um, this is a full bodied whiskey. It definitely leaves a nice Kentucky hug in the back, but it's like something about it is just I, so interesting and good in a, in a different way. It's definitely not like the stereotypical bourbons, especially like anything like Booker's. Um, it does have a little bit of like a nutmeggy spice and a little bit of oak spice in there as well on the palate, but completely separate from Booker's. I mean, this is his own unique profile and honestly, I am here for it. So, Good. All right, everybody. Uh, time for the grading portion. Now, this is going to be kind of more intricate than it usually is. I'm going to grade it on a couple different things, and then we're going to kind of take the average of that and give it an overall grade because while this may be an amazing bottle, it definitely asks a heavy price. So, that being said, I'm going to grade it on the nose, I'm going to grade it on the palette, and then I'm going to grade it on the value for the money, and then we're going to take those averages, and that's going to be the grade that it gets. And I'm going to probably do this with the rest of my bottles, but um, starting off on the nose here, nose is very intricate. A lot of things going on, really good, and honestly, like, interesting. Just fun to explore, dig through, and just like pick out things of it. I think the nose, honestly, in my opinion, deserves high nines, out, or mid to high nines, I would say a 9.5 or a 9.6. So we're gonna give it a 9.5 because uh, we gotta leave room for some things. And that being said, the palette of this whiskey, um, very similar to the nose, maybe a little bit more straightforward, but it definitely brings like an interesting aspect with that honey smoked ham, which is something that I personally really enjoy. Uh, it's sweet, it's easy to drink, but it definitely has full body flavor and a nice warm Kentucky hug. So the palette of this whiskey is going to get a 9.3 out of 10. Now that leaves the value for the money. And honestly, it's $130. It's got four four-year whiskeys and a five-year-old whiskey. Uh, that doesn't add up to some very old whiskey. However, uh, it is an experimental series. It's got a lot of finishes on it. I mean, finished in four different barrels between the f four malt whiskeys in there, which makes something very interesting, which is how I think they can get away with that age statement. However, um, coming in at $130, I think the age statement is almost needed. That being said, uh, I'm gonna have to give the value for money closer to an 8.2. That being said, all those added together divided by three equals nine, and that is a great out of 10. This gets a nine out of 10 uh, for me, honestly. It's great whiskey. If you guys see it and you like the little book, uh, I would pick it up. I've never had the other little books, so I can't really tell you how close it is to the other ones, but if you guys are hardcore bourbon drinkers and you're not a fan of malty whiskeys or like nice Highland scotches, Maybe this isn't your bottle, especially for the price. But for all you scotch drinkers out there and all the people who like that nice, sweet malted whiskeys, um, this is like home base. I mean, this is center of the road, amazing, uh, very intricate and very fun to drink. So I like it a lot. That being said, this is the end of the video. If you guys liked it, please hit the like button, comment in the comment section, whether you guys are gonna be looking for this little book, chapter six or not. And I'll see you all in the next class.